So today we're going to look at speed tree. We're going to bring in just one of the speed tree library trees. So let me just find where we have some of the saved. Let's try the sample pine. And what we're going to do here is we'll just do a little bit of simple things. You can enable wind, just clicking on the fan, enabling wind. There's a wind parameter right there with the wind wizard. You can change some of the settings. I'm going to change this to calm and then click OK. And then you can do um, minute changes within the wind if you go under the wind setting. And you can dial in everything from globally to individual parameters, uh, like the leaves or certain branches that are blowing. So if we just keep this up, go to wind. And you can see here there's a strength. There's all kinds of shared levels that basically if you just click, the icon and you can slide up and down to make it more calm or more stormy and it's just literally whatever you want to do for each parameter that you can change. Now you can do them all different individually or you could go back up to the main source and change that um, so it affects everything in a large fashion. And let's see you go up here so the main strength you can really lower down so it's hardly anything and then response time lowering that strength and you'll get a much lower tolerance now the easy thing to do is you can just click export you could either do it as an OBJ or an FBX and you'll basically get everything that you want with it for the textures that are assigned you can change different parameters but typically I'll keep it on hierarchy and then just export and then really all you need to do now is bring it into your package of choice, which for me is Maya. I'll import in that OBJ. It'll take a second to load. Here's that tree with all the shaders already assigned. But for me, I want to use Redshift. So let me just hook up an HDR uh, Skydome for Redshift. We'll make sure to get see what our render looks like through here. And you'll see basically with the basic blend materials on it, how it looks through Redshift. So you can see here, it's a little bit over bright, you know, the density, it's not all the 100%. So what we can do is we'll manually switch all the shaders over to Redshift. So all I'm gonna do is create a Redshift material, name it the same name as each shader, and then basically select the shader, select the objects that have that in, and then transfer the associations to it to each material and then basically all I'm doing right now is replicating the bark material one into the red bark redshift material one and it really is you know it's a little time consuming but you literally are recreating the connections to store and have your own redshift shadered speed tree uh, saved so I'm going to go through all the shaders right now. Basically, all I'm doing is hooking up the albedo or the diffuse, uh, the normal map, and the spec roughness map, basically. And then just go through each of these. So once you get used to this, it's just repetition of doing it. On this one, you can see I have variation on the needles. I have one needle and needle two. And then needle one has variations with the albedo, but basically the gloss and the roughness are the same. And here you can see that the bark just got darker. So here's fast forwarding. I've already connected everything for the speed tree. And now you can see it's much more balanced into the speed tree uh, with Redshift. So what I also like to do now is with my SLib Pro, I'm going to create a tree library asset under speed tree that basically I'm going to have my object selected, the pine, and then in SLib Pro, all I need to do is import this into my library. Now I choose whether I want it as a Maya file and then whether I copy the textures into a specific folder or leave them where I have it. And right now I've already created the pine asset and now I'm just making a thumbnail and then just replacing. So now I've actually imported into my library this pine tree. So if I want to just test it out, 
I'll load it back in in a new scene. Go back into my object mode. There's the pine. Let it load through. And there it is. Now let me do a test render. Put in, you know, because I did a new file, need a new HDR, the Sky Dome. And there we have it. <coughs> now, the other thing you can see is this pine tree has 987,000 polys. So that's pretty good for a high res or relatively high. But let me reduce it now. So I'm reducing the poly count. And now we're down to more than a half. It's 311,000. And if we compare it to our previous render, it still looks pretty decent in terms of a low res. So what we can do now, let's import this into our asset. And I'm going to call this Pine Low, L-O. And that's going to be our low resolution. So if we wanted to scatter these in the distance, we would use the Pine Low. And I could even go one more level and have it even simpler. Uh, but for right now, we'll just do a Pine and a Pine Low. And this is really how I would do... I would go through any kind of trees or shrubs that I want to make and acetize them through my SLib browser from Maya because now I have a repetition way of doing this. But let's say in Speed Tree that we want to actually change the shape of this tree. So what we do now is we can just hit this randomize button and just keep clicking until we get a variation of the pine tree that we like and basically export it. And now we can have variants for our tree species.